nice to be talking to you. Uh, my name's Adam Gordon, I'm CEO and co-founder of Candidate ID, which is talent pipeline automation software. Uh, and I'm Tom Paulsingel, uh, I'm employer brand manager at Nationwide. Um, I've been in role for about six months and I, I thought just as a bit of a precursor, um, it would probably help to give you a bit of a background. I'm not necessarily from your world. Um, I've got a particular set of skills that I've developed over the career, but I'm not Liam Neeson in Taken. I'm not an assassin. I come from the comms PR world, um, B2B and consumer marketing. So um, I felt that moving into Nationwide as employer brand manager uh, has been a real convergence between my old world and where recruitment marketing's heading. And that's what led me to be introduced to Adam and Candidate ID. And it's something that we're trialing at the minute. Um, we're not going to present a case study because we're still in the middle of it, but I think the methodology is something that we can all learn and, and adapt and potentially use. So, if I just give you a minute just to have a quick look at that slide. I know it looks like green funnels from the back of the room, but if we just take a look here. So, we've got, these are the consideration stages that Adam's devised. Awareness, education, consideration to um, application. So what's absolutely apparent is that the candidate journey is changing, and it's changing really quickly. But it's happening in every space. So if I think consumer marketing, uh, Ipsos Mori, call it familiarity to favorability to advocacy. So um, what's really important here is that everyone, be it a consumer or a candidate, has access to information. And they will go looking for it, and they will find it. And you've got to make sure that your channels are suitably um, ready for those people to go and find it. And as you can see, this day and age now, the recruiter doesn't have that much influence when it comes to providing that information. They already know it. So we've got to engage and we've got to provide that information early. So <clears throat> why that's an issue is because <clears throat> when we're thinking about employer branding, we're really thinking about creating content that's for a specific part of the candidate journey. It's really for people who are at the education stage. People at the awareness stage do not care about your job descriptions and they don't care about your employer brand. They're not ready for a conversation. So we need to try and engage with them in a way which is not about selling your organization and about selling careers with your organization. People in the consideration stage, they need something that's a lot more bespoke to them and a lot more specific to what they actually want to find out about. Um, but if we're able to understand, using technology, which stage people are at in the journey, which channels that they prefer, which content formats they prefer, and what subjects they're interested in, and we can then serve them a personalized experience based on that information, that's going to bring more, it's going to engage more people, and it's going to bring more people through this funnel. So in, in the instance of how we've been using it in Nationwide, I think it's a, a perennial challenge that we all have here in the room is how can you demonstrate <coughs> that value, uh, that quantifiable ROI? How can you also build that credibility within your own delivery teams and your resourcing teams? So what's been really benef beneficial for us is that by using Candidate ID, not only can we provide the uh, candidates with bespoke content, but we can also track how they're engaging with that content. What channels are they using? Um, guess what, if uh, some people like white people, some people like video. Um, and what's important is that those 200 circa prospects, um, which we've nailed down to approximately 20, who we can see how they are engaging with our content, we can then provide that insight to our delivery teams. And that's quite powerful stuff. So, you know, none of us in this room like to be cold called. It's no different with candidates. So it's really important that when we're providing these so say leads to our resourcing team, that they're engaging with people who are ready to be engaged back. So when we, when we talk about linking employer brand <clears throat> directly to placements, what I mean, I mean, not everybody agrees with me on this, but I believe you absolutely can and should link employer brand directly to jobs being filled. Faster, better people, more relevant people, uh, less expensive. If you can track and score each candidate coming through your employer brand or engaging with your other recruitment marketing or general marketing communications activities, 
you can link exactly what you're doing to filling jobs. That means you can go back to the business for budget because you're controlling a pipeline. So the reason why uh, most organizations have limited or no budget, partially it's because people like Helen and Nick are able to do things for free because they're just really smart, but part, partially it's also because a lot of employer brand activity in the past has been, somebody used the words, not me, I'm not gonna say it's me that's saying this, somebody else used it earlier, fluffy shit. So um, you don't want to be um, talking in terms of fluffy shit. You wanna be talking in terms of my work is delivering more candidates, more relevant candidates, and faster. So, <clears throat> we need to think about um, the top of the funnel. For me, content absolutely is vital. The kind of content that you share is really, really important, and that's what the essence of your employer brand is all about. Absolutely, I agree with that. However, more important than that, I believe, because everybody can do that first bit. You can do it if you just apply the right logic and the right thinking to it. More important than that, I think, is channels. It's distribution. It's how are you bringing people in? How are you bringing the right people in? Are you where your candidates are? So we want to be thinking about a constant flow of what we call higher ready candidates through various different, and this is not ex exhaustive in the slightest. We've got direct sourcing, social media marketing, advertising events, traditional press, all of these different channels, you have to think about you know, all of them. And there's a lot more as well. So if we're able to track and score what candidates are doing online, we're able to understand what type of content is and what channels and what content formats are driving the most demand. With data, this is all about data. With the numbers, you can see how many people are coming through Instagram, how many people are coming through LinkedIn, how many people are coming through email, how many people are coming th through text messages, which, by the way, is a seriously underutilized and very high-performing channel. Um, if you can see what's driving the most demand, stop doing the things that people are not interested in, do more of the things that people absolutely are interested in and that is making them take action. The call to action, incidentally, is almost never apply for this job because hardly anybody is ready to apply for a job today. Most people are in the awareness or the education phase. They're not ready for that. The call to action for them is look at something different. Look at or listen to or view something different that's relevant and useful to them. So it's all about building engagement and building goodwill <clears throat> with people way ahead of them uh, being interested in actually applying for an opportunity. So if you're able to track and score what people are doing, you're able to uh, deliver a personalized nurture experience at scale. What this really means is uh, we know if we've got thousands and thousands of candidates, some of you will have millions of candidates on your database. Um, you're able to understand at scale, auto automated, that Tom likes content about skills sent through email in a video format, whereas Adam likes content about industry insights sent through text message in an infographic format. And if you can do that, simple as this, more people will engage with your business. Oops. So in terms of the um, consideration stages, just to go into a bit more detail here, I think what's really important, Adam's touched on it, but about segmenting what that content looks like. So. Um, with my old hat on, it was no different to how I try to warm up and engage a journalist, would be no different to how I'm trying to engage a, a passive candidate. You need to start raising that awareness first. You can't go in um, with the first couple of communications and start sharing job descriptions. It's not going to work. I was saying to Adam um, before we came in, there, there's a film, Glengarry Glen Ross, that some of you may have seen. It's sort of like a, an early version of The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and Alec Baldwin's character, he's teaching these, these sales guys who are selling fake real estate. And he's on a blackboard and it says A, B, C. And A is always, B is B and C is closing. Always be closing. But we're not at the closing selling stage when we're in the awareness and education stage. That to me is the brand influ for influence. That's where you need to talk more. You're not even thinking job descriptions. You're talking about 
what your organisation is about, the values, what will resonate with that candidate, an insight into the team that they might be joining. It's only then when we progress through the funnel, through the content campaign, towards the consideration and the application stages, that you move from that branding for influence to branding for appeal. That's where the sell element comes in. And that's hopefully where your resourcing team then can you know, help turn those prospects into to viable candidates. Just to add a little bit, a little bit more to that, um, a couple of simple ways to kind of explain this, because there's a lot of detail on that slide, but a couple of simple ways to explain this. People in the awareness stage don't care about your job descriptions. Don't spam them. If you send out, you send out what most organizations are doing today, if they're doing any kind of database talent engagement, they're emailing a job description out to everybody on the database because segmenting and filtering is, is too difficult on an ATS. Um, they don't care about that, but what they do care about, and I know this from data, is things that will help them with their career. Um, skills, industry insights, those kinds of things. If you're sharing th them th things with them that will help them with their career, they're building goodwill for you and your brand. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see that. Again, back of the room, it might look like a psychedelic honeycomb, I don't know. But it's, this is basically the, the, the score and heat map. And this has been quite invaluable from my perspective using Candidate ID so that in real time I can measure um, not only what candidates who are on our distribution list are receiving and how they're engaging with it, but most importantly I can tweak and I can tailor it as they progress through the content journey. So ultimately what we're trying to do is get the guys... Um, to the top of the, see where um, the, the, the red parts of the diagram, which are the job search, job, uh, job description, contact me. So, um, and I guess this comes back to a point of, you know, sort of left brain, right brain. So if I'm looking to recruit auditors, for example, how I communicate with them and the levers and the pulls are very different to how I would be advertising, say, if it was for account managers or sales people. And so by having that opportunity to tweak the campaign in real time based on the data that's being provided hopefully gives us a much better chance of progressing those candidates through the funnel up to the consideration application stage which represents the red part of the diagram. There's some, there's some simple logic in this and it's a kind of balanced scorecard so along the bottom you, can, you, you can't see but I'll tell you. Um, if somebody's maybe opening your email <clears throat> that score is low because it's a low commitment activity whereas if they're looking at your blog or your video or your white paper, logic is they're deeper into the content, it's a higher commitment, it's, it's, it's a deeper kind of level of um, engagement. And then <clears throat> on, on the left, if they're engaging with your industry news down at the bottom or skills, and that's all they're doing, don't send them job descriptions. But if that's all they're doing, they're not ready for your recruiters to pick up the phone to them. However, you're still giving them things that they're interested in, that they want. So you are building goodwill for the, me for the medium term. Up at the top, however, um, as Tom mentioned, if they're starting to look at your career-focused event or their, your job search or your job description, it may well be that that indicates they're ready for a conversation. Um, we, we, we know from data that this really varies depending on what type of people you're trying to interact with. If salespeople are looking at your job description, that does not mean they're ready for a conversation. They're benchmarking. If software engineers are looking at your job descriptions, they've done a lot of stuff until they've got to that point. That's the last thing they do before they decide whether to apply or not to apply. If they then apply, fine, you don't need to take any further action. But if you can see which software engineers are coming to your job description, then then not applying, you know who to pick up the phone to, and that human interaction at that stage is gonna convert more people into coming into the actual recruitment process. <clears throat> so, um, Here's just an example. This is, a, this is a simple outline of what Nationwide are doing in terms of engaging with the database. It's actually it's for technology candidates. And this is a, it's a quite a simple format, form of um, automation in here. A couple of things I would point out. Email is the number one channel for driving engagement with candidates. It still is. Everybody thinks that it's passe and that millennials don't like email or whatever. It's not the case. P email drives the most engagement. That's why pretty much everybody that runs Candidate ID is taking an email first approach. But the automation 
is anybody who opens that email and then does whatever it might be next, they then get streamed into a journey based on what they're doing. Anybody that doesn't open that email, they get the same email three days later with a different subject heading. People will open it. They didn't open the first time, they'll open the second time. It might be about timing. It might be about the subject heading being slightly different and more, more catchy for them. Anybody who then doesn't open the email the first time or the second time will then get a text message three days later. So you can, you can, see, you can see, you can recycle a lot of your existing content in order to have three, four, ten different bites of that cherry. So then, this is really what gets my creative juices coming. So in terms of um, Adam providing the application and then thinking about the content that can actually go into that campaign, and this is a good example. Nick in the panel um, before lunch uh, highlighted, I think, the, the value that um, if you can find and identify those heroes in your organization to bring those communications to life, that's really, really powerful stuff. So, you know, it's a cliche phrase, I know, but, you know, people buy from people. So in the instance of our campaign where we were looking for IT architects, um, we wanted uh, the, the CTO of the organization to actually provide a face behind and a personality behind the jobs that we were recruiting for. Because if I'm an IT architect, it's not just um, about the organization. And many of them didn't make nationwide synonymous with IT architecture. They thought we do mortgages, we do savings, which we do, but not as a fintech. Um, but we've got a wonderful evangelical CTO who very passionately believes that we're creating a fintech. So that was something that we wanted to pull out during the communication. So piece of advice, you know, it, and whether it's candidate ID or whether you're building your own attraction campaign, is make sure you personalize it with people in the team. It could be from the very top because those uh, candidates want to see who the person is, who the leader of the, of the community is, who, who they're going to be working for, but also on a peer-to-peer -peer level. So don't be job elitist. If there's people uh, in, in the team at uh, a similar level to what you're recruiting for, bring them out, bring them to life. So just, just to add a little bit of extra to that, um, like no offense, I'm, I'm a recruiter. Um, candidates don't want to talk to recruiters. They don't want to hear from recruiters until they've gone through the awareness and the education phases and done all that self-directed stuff. So if you're putting somebody into the middle of the talent attraction kind of process as a as an magnet, and that person's got the same technical background as those potential candidates, and that person is in a job that maybe they aspire to, they're going to engage more. They're going to open more of your messages. They're going to um, then click on to look at what that person's talking about. Just to do a quick straw poll. I know it's been touched on in terms of um, maybe consumer marketing teams or media relations teams or external relations teams that exist in organizations. But from a button heads point of view, how many uh, have those functions within, within your organization? Yeah. We don't readily actively engage with them. I think we've established that today, but we need to. And in this instance, why it's really powerful is because there's brilliant content that's being produced across those channels, um, be it uh, annual reports or be it financial results, or if it's consumer marketing, uh, product literature or customer service information um, that can help provide that narrative, provide that storytelling aspect to your candidate ID <coughs> campaign. And that's really important that you bring that out. As, as, as Adam said, that we want to try and get the prospects not as thinking that this is a recruitment campaign, but this is a, a, a content storytelling exercise where they can picture themselves in the organization, where the values chime with what you know, resonates with, with, the, with them. And more importantly, we nurture them through the process. But it's really important. A lot of this, uh, a lot of this information is at our fingertips, but we don't, we don't ask for it. We don't go knocking on doors. We don't go and visit other areas in the business. Um, if you're a smaller organization here, you may have, for example, on your website, um, content feeds from third parties. Use that. As long as you cite them and uh, attribute that within your campaign, fine. But don't ignore these really rich information sources because it can really just help bring your campaign to life. And the amount of recruiters that I talk to or employer brand people I talk to who say, um, <clears throat> to take this kind of approach, I'm going to need a lot, lot more content and I simply don't have time to create it. 
So we then go onto their website and look, there's absolutely loads of great stuff there. Take a look at your internal kind of learning and development programs. <clears throat> there's loads and loads of great content in there that can be used to give to candidates as, here's a great way of getting ahead in your career. The skills and ideas and things that um, can absolutely be recycled. In recruitment, we tend to think about what content is going to sell the job. But what we ignore is, what content are people who are not in the job market interested in? Um, so, <clears throat> while you're doing this kind of thing, while you're pipelining talent, while you are um, creating a warm bench of future hires and you're able to understand uh, more about people, ask them questions. We call this progressive profiling. So, in this case, this is just a screenshot of a fill out your form with what's your uh, mobile number and what's your, are you looking for a new job? Okay, but then when you start asking more questions, in order to access some high value piece of content, the CEO's video about the future of your industry, in order to access this video, just one question. If you were looking for a job, would you consider our organization? Or um, in your next job move, which of these salary brackets would you be looking for? Or um, if you were going to make a job move, would you be geographically mobile? It's questions like that that help you to continuously build up a profile of all of the people that you might want to approach for opportunities. So this is just a screenshot example of how you can go about filtering candidates. This is the bit about employer brand leads to placements. So this is an example. These are all candidates here with their email address. <clears throat> They're all potential candidates in London, filtered according to an engagement score. So this person was active 25 days ago, 17 days ago, 104 days ago. That's too long ago. 145 days ago, too long ago. But here we go. Four days, five days. There's a couple that are really, really recent. And you can go down and down and down. And your recruiters will get to shortlist 50% faster, on average, if they're able to understand which candidates on your database are today interested in uh, or, or are giving the signals that suggest that they're going to be ready for a conversation. I think just on that, that's where the joined up approach with your delivery teams is really vital <coughs> in this. So, you know, think of a, a relay race analogy, you know, handing the baton over. It's really important that as the EB experts, that you don't sort of pat yourself on the proverbial back once you've done the campaign and you see the leads coming in. It's really important that you're working with your delivery teams to, to recognise what are those candidates who have not only shown an interest but have actually accessed the content and are potentially ready for that, for that contact. As Adam said, anything, you know, in my opinion, anything over a couple of weeks is too long. You've lost them. Because remember, this is a push communication channel. So we're engaging with these candidates who may be in your ATS, for example, who have been there for dormant for a couple of months that you've reawakened, you've re-energized. So if they start clicking on links and giving you information and updating their details, how's that going to feel then if they don't hear anything back in some instances over 100 days? You know, you've sort of shot yourself in the own foot there. So. The relay race is, an, is a really an interesting analogy, actually. And in a, in a relay race, you, your, your fastest runner will run the longest leg. So they'll take the baton at the start of the changeover box, and they'll hand it over at the end of the next changeover box. My view is that employer brand, recruitment marketing, talent attraction teams should today be running by far the longest leg. Um, because you have so, so much more influence over what happens in the pipeline than you ever had before, because it's so measurable, so easy to measure now. Um, so this is just an example of, again, you won't be able to see exactly what it says here, but um, this is an example of a candidate's journey. So you filtered your candidates according to an engagement score. You then go into the candidate, and, and you find these candidates have been um, interested in the last week. They've been on our career site and looked at a job description. Let's go in and see what exactly they've done, and that'll inform me how best to approach this person. So here's just an example of a candidate who <clears throat> opened an email from Nationwide CTO, then looked at an, went straight to look at a job, an a job in architecture, and looked at the career site, and went and looked at a blog about Nationwide's Innovation Lab. So this is getting really deep into the content around what's it really like to work here? Um, why work for us? They looked at employee stories. 
um, advice on how to do some things in relation to getting a job with this organization. Um, this is just one screenshot of giving you some data which will help your recruiters to know what to say when they pick up the phone or send an email or a LinkedIn message or whatever to that candidate. So that's what we were going to cover today. I hope it's been interesting. Um, and I'm conscious that the approach that we advocate is for any of you that are from a marketing background or have a degree in marketing or anything like that, a lot of the things that I've been talking about are not brand new, or that Tom and I have been talking about are not brand new. Um, however, they're very rarely applied. A lot of these, 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 these techniques are very rarely applied into recruitment, and we believe they absolutely should be far, far wider adopted.